Hey, it's Alex Williams of the New Stack. Welcome to the New Stack Makers, a podcast where we talk about application development, deployment, and management at scale. GitLab is a single application for the entire software development lifecycle. From project planning and source code management to CICD monitoring and security, GitLab helps enterprises deliver software to market at new speeds. Hey, we're here at GitLab Commit in Brooklyn, New York. And I am going to be talking with today, Eddie Zineski. How you doing, Alex? Hey, how are you? Manager of Developer Relations at DigitalOcean. Sean Corkum. Nice to see you, Alex. Hey, Sean, who is a senior engineer at Northwestern Mutual, and Kyle Pearson, senior engineer at Northwestern Mutual as well. Happy to be here. So our talk today is we're going to discuss Continuous integration, continuous delivery. And I'm just always curious about thinking about this from the team perspective. And how does a organization kind of build its team to actually do continuous integration, continuous delivery, because that's really at the core of it. That's really how you need to really kind of build it out. Would you guys agree with that? Yeah, I mean, uh, it's, it's something that you, you have to, it has to be ingrained to you know, in the, in the culture of the team to, to really take full advantage of everything that you can get from that. Uh, making sure that you're, you're building fast, failing fast, and everyone understands is totally on board, like, yeah, this is the right way that we should go. Yeah. So who are the people on, for example, in Northwestern Mutual that you would have on your team? I mean, do you have, like, how many, you know, approximately do you have multiple teams? Do you have tens of teams, 20s of teams? Is it starting to grow? Is it starting to build out? Well, so you've got the core, like CICD team, that's going to be leading and setting a lot of the best practices and maintaining some of the shared services. But then CICD isn't just stop there. You have ambassadors out in the, you know, the development teams that are, you know, becoming CICD practitioners or, or leaders that are trying to then grow that same mentality and propagate that culture throughout the enterprise. So at, uh, at DigitalOcean, who is on your team? Who are the people that you have on? For example, the teams that are building out the CICD pipelines and building out the products and service? Yeah, so I, I serve on our developer relations team, but we have a full uh, CICD pipeline team inside of DO uh, under engineering. And uh, yeah, they have a, a bunch of cool stuff built out, and I think uh, they're doing a lot of work next quarter, too. So, mm -hmm. so tell me then about uh, GitLab, and what were you doing before you started using GitLab, and how did you guys make that migration to the so, platform. So I, I've been around NM long enough to remember uh, <laughs> we were using a Team City for our CI. And Team CD. City? Yeah. Um, I've never heard of that. Uh, uh, it was from IntelliJ, like if I remember city. right. Yeah, yeah. JetBrains. JetBrains, <laughs> yeah. Uh, JetBrains, okay. Yeah, really nice product, but yeah. yeah I mean, it, it, was, it was a great product, and, and this is, you know, 2015, 2016. Yeah. It, it did its did its job, you know, we were able to, to get going, but uh, honestly, once GitLab CI came about, it just made it made a lot more sense for us to kind of transition to that because it it, it pushed the, pushed everything so much closer to the developers and I mean, they're the ones that know how to test their code they know how to build their code so we we can set up like hey here's a template of like if you just want to go you know you can just here you go but if you need to like you know go off the beaten path or something like they can just take care of themselves they don't have to worry about like contacting another team to like hey i need a change to this and you can just do it get going how does it fit then with the experience that a developer has for example um, what do you mean by how does it i fit? mean like how does it fit into the overall workflow how did how do you you know how are you using gitlab in your overall workflow for, for continuous integration continuous delivery? i mean gitlab is at the center of it all right you're you build on SCM, that's kind of your core thing that everyone's attracted to and is the, the key component, but then all the other parts of the ecosystem built around it, um, you know, whether it's CICD or whether it's the scanning, um, you know, we were early adopters of GitLab, so we've built a lot of tools around it ourselves um, to complement some of that functionality too. 
It's what just nice the, to see those integrations. What did you see in it that compared in, in comparison to the other peers out there? Uh, I think having everything in one spot is the clear differentiator. So, you know, all of your status information, your monitoring, it's all in the same dashboard. It's all in one spot. Um, you're not clicking between different disparate um, interfaces to get that information for fast feedback. What is that? Does that have any drawbacks to it, Eddie? It's, um, you know, some people uh, don't like having everything in one place. I think some people do. It really depends on what your needs are for the org. Um, I personally, I, I've been working with, with GitLab a ton for the past, you know, month or so preparing for this talk, and I've really enjoyed it all being in one place. Mm -hmm. So what have you learned in this past month? My biggest thing that I've learned, it's definitely a hot take, is that CICD is just like janky shell scripts that are grouped together nicely. <laughs> and uh, it's, you know, GitLab does a great job with auto DevOps. I think that's the future of where we're heading. Where like, I don't need to know that I need to run these commands to build my application, right? Like someone, someone should build a tool that does that for me. And I think auto DevOps pipelines really take care of that for you. What is what does Auto DevOps do for the janky shell scripts out there? I was just kind of a, a, a base template. Like if, if you're building you know, a, a Docker image or something like that, they provided some like the generic stuff, like where you don't have to worry about it. It'll just okay. It'll build my app and it'll do some some basic testing and stuff like that right away. Um, but they you know, GitLab also allows you to do things like include files in your GitLab CI. So it was just a, it's an easy way, like if you have custom stuff that you need to do within your organization, you can have it all in one spot and everyone can just share it. From in there. an include file. Yeah, so you just make a reference to a URL in, in your local repo and it pulls in a whole CI pulls file. Pulls all that. It, kind of the same way like Auto DevOps works. Yeah. So would you add anything to that about the janky shell scripts? <laughs> it's, a, it's an interesting hot take. You know, I, I would say Auto DevOps has some definite potential, but I'm, I'm a healthy skeptic. Um, you know, looking at Auto DevOps, it's really neat to see these clear-cut, cookie-cutter kind of patterns and things. If that fits your use case, that's awesome. But we find that like a lot of our apps will deviate from that. And then you, you know, like Sean was mentioning, the templates. That's a key, powerful thing. To okay, it's great if you have a happy path scenario, but then you also need that flexibility to break out and either bring in your own templates or augment the off-the-shelf capability uh, with with something of your own doing. Any other hot takes out there? <laughs> They, I mean, I, I mean, I love the hot take. I mean, whenever you whenever you develop a presentation, you gotta have a hot take. <laughs> I got nothing right now. I, I think I'm gonna have to steal that one though for, for later. That was good. Well, so, so my question for you though is, what what is so specific to how you're building software and delivering it that you can't use a template? Like, what's so unique that you need to build something custom there? You know, in some cases, it's probably not even necessarily the best reasons for having things that are custom, and I've, you know, I'm the first to admit that. But I think when you're looking at, um, you know, a company as old as ours, we have a lot of, we have to meet legacy needs, we have to meet the current needs, we have to meet the future needs. So to bridge all of those different generations of applications, you know, a lot of the stuff that's coming out from GitLab is targeting, okay, your three-tier web app or your Node.js, you know, all this good stuff. Well, you know, we have mainframe stuff too. You're not getting an auto DevOps template for mainframe. Uh, it's just it's not there. So when you have other requirements that are enterprisey and don't necessarily fit in with a cloud native strategy, but you still want to bring along and apply the same CICD principles, apply DevOps best practices to those other sort of uh, modalities, you know, that's where the, the custom stuff is really justified. Yeah, that's fair. I uh, did not consider using mainframes. <laughs> <laughs> no, IBM just, was it IBM? Someone just released a new mainframe like two days ago. I think it was IBM. Yeah, I've heard things yeah. like, you know, mainframe <laughs> Docker and buzz things yeah. like that, but you know, it's, it's all TBD, it's a moving target. There's a new open source project for mainframes. It's out. Open main, I think it's called Open Mainframe. Hmm. Anyway, <laughs> moving on from mainframes. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to throw us back into the Stone Ages. <clears throat> it, it's interesting. So we just did a, I just did an interview with some people about uh, GitOps. What's your hot take on GitOps and how it relates to continuous delivery? Is it, do you have any kind of thoughts on, do you use GitOps? Is, is GitOps just kind of a, a, kind of a, a buzzword? Is it a, that, that, that everyone has a hot take on? <laughs> I was gonna say it's a buzzword. I mean, it's a buzzword for stuff that a lot of people are already doing. Um, is Git the source of truth still then? Is it, I mean, will it, 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 is it the source of truth then? And so if it is the source of truth, then it doesn't really make any difference on 
What you call it? On what you call it? On what you call it. Then oh, you... yeah, yeah. I, I think you summed it up nicely, actually. I mean, you can put a brand or a, a word on it, but yeah, if, if you're using Git as kind of the center of the source of truth and then it propagates through pipelines, you're, you're sort of already doing it. That's what GitLab provides. Yeah. Um, so, but, I mean, I guess when I'm thinking about you know, Northwest Mutual, it's an insurance company that's been around for a long time. And so how do you simplify it so continuous delivery can be, uh, you know, spread far and wide inside the organization? Yeah. Because we have seen the, you know, there's documented upsides to it. You wouldn't be doing it if there wasn't. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's definitely been kind of a tricky one, you know, finding that balancing act between taking some of you know, your more legacy applications and, you know, helping, helping them take what they have now and, you know, helping fix some of the pain points that these teams are seeing and also trying to find a way to get them to, you know, or enable them to, to make changes with their application to bring the architecture into a more modern arc, which allows them to better take care of, a, or better take advantage of your of CI and CD. How about you, any other, are you finding ways that Northwest Mutual has adopted CD that's making it easy for people to, you know, to, you know, to at least kind of you know, become part of their workflows or their practices that, you, that have been developed that have made it uh, more acceptable and more approachable for people? Well, I mean, sometimes people are, you know, they're brand new to automation and they've been doing things with, you know, developing code on their laptop. Maybe it's not even in version control yet. So just getting them first into a, a tool like GitLab, it really opens up the potential for, um, you know, getting that history and getting the, the social coding aspect where things can be peer reviewed and, um, you know, taking that to the next level, of course, and then adding an automated testing, those are all things that are going to give people that fast feedback and allow them to deliver value faster with a high amount of quality. So at, at DigitalOcean, is continuous delivery been part of the organization for a while? Is it, I mean, it seems like DigitalOcean would be a kind of company that have been, would have been using it for some time. Yeah, so we've been using uh, Kubernetes since it came out in like the early Wild West days when, you know, all these nice abstractions didn't exist. And so we built a, a platform layer on top of Kubernetes called DOCC, which we always talk about but never move towards open sourcing, maybe one day. Uh, but the, the idea of building Docker containers and shipping them off to you know, a Kubernetes cluster has been running production at DO for like four years now. So it's uh, yeah, very much fully invested and ingrained into how DOs deliver software. So you also, though, have a big... Uh you, know, you, you wrote a blog post, I think it was actually, I'm looking at it from June of last year on how to autoscale GitLab, continuous deployment with GitLab runners on DigitalOcean. Can you tell us about GitLab runners and you know, what they are and what the value is that they provide DigitalOcean? Yeah, so the GitLab runners, uh, I was super impressed with them. Um, so I've been, so for my talk, I was doing a lot of preparation, running through it a lot of times, and I was using the shared runners. And build times, you know, would take anywhere from like a minute to like, you know, six minutes sometimes. It was just like super in flux. Uh, and so the, if you're not familiar, the GitLab runner is just a binary that you can deploy on a server. You can deploy it to a Kubernetes cluster. There's a bunch of different ways to run the runner. Uh, and all the runner does is it uh, does a pull for jobs from GitLab to run. Uh, and that's what's unique about it, too. It, it's not a push thing. It's a pull thing. So the runner will reach out to GitLab and be like, hey, you got anything for me to run? Uh, and then all of your CI CD pipelines that are in GitLab uh, can be kicked off into the runners to actually run and complete. And so by subbing in my own runners on my own VMs, instead of using the shared runners, I cut my build times down to like consistent like 30, 45 seconds. Um, and it's great, you know, it's great that GitLab provides shared runners for everyone to use for free. It's like super generous of them. Um, but like when build times and that kind of stuff are in you need, that's where you really want to lean on those runners. They can do a lot for you. Are there any, uh, are there any drawbacks to the runners that you find? Are there any kind of, what are the, what are the kind of trade-offs you're finding with the runners? I think the runners are, it's really mature at this point. Like it's definitely got like a little heart on GitLab's, um, you know, um, readiness chart. I don't remember what Sid called it. Uh, but it's, it's like super secure, it's super stable. Uh, onboarding a runner into your GitLab project is just the smoothest thing. You just run like GitLab runner uh, register and then it walks you through like a wizard in the terminal about like paste in the URL, paste in the token, name this one. Uh, what do you want to use for your executor? Do you want to use Docker, Docker machine? Uh, you know, a bunch of different other options. And uh, it's like definitely really just like well done with like a super 
uh, ease of use for developers in mind. And uh, no, I don't, I don't really see any drawbacks. Actually, one of the biggest benefits, I, I mentioned the, the pull instead of push. I was talking to um, Philip Schwartz from T-Mobile. I think he's giving a talk here. And the, they switched to using GitLab SAS because it was easier for them to get GitLab SAS approved than GitLab on-prem because if you do on-prem, then you have to like, worry about punching holes in your network, putting things behind your firewall. But by using GitLab SAS, uh, they were able to run their runners inside their own network, and because it's a pull instead of a push, they had to open no holes in their network. So it's super secure that way. So I'm sorry if I butchered that, Philip, but that's the story you told me last night. <laughs> so uh, with, do you guys use the SaaS version or on-prem? We use the on-prem. And how so wide is that? Oh, uh, I mean, there's, being a financial tech, we have a lot of compliance and regulations that we need to, so it was for those reasons that that was our, that was our option. We would never get a, the SaaS option approved. Does that lead to any um, uh, matters you need to think about when running GitLab runners, for example, that uh, Eddie was discussing? Well, it's a similar story. I mean, we, we obviously don't have the free ones from GitLab.com because we're not on the SaaS solution, so we run our own farm <laughs> and use a, a variety of the executors that Eddie mentioned, you know, they each kind of have some of their own pros and cons, and um, it's, it's nice to have that flexibility so that, you know, whether Kubernetes is the right fit or whether Docker Machine is the right fit, you can mix and match and run a, a nice hybrid fleet as flexible as you want. You are, you, you, are you presenting at the conference? Yeah. yeah. What's your topic? Uh, we're both presenting one that's uh, about running GitLab and Kubernetes and uh, the GitLab runners in Kube. Okay. At the so, enterprise level. Yeah. So tell what. So what are some of the themes that you're discussing in your talk? Uh, well, for my part of it, it's a lot of the the experiences and kind of things that we learned as we started, you know, moving GitLab into Kubernetes. We started working on it back in 2016, so there was no kind of documentation around that. Nobody was really even thinking of it, uh, especially at at a larger scale. So I'm handling the the CI aspect of it. I'm talking about how we're starting to dabble in running GitLab runners on Kubernetes. Uh, like I said, we have the Docker machine environment, but uh, Kubernetes provides some interesting um, security options, actually. If, if you integrate with the GitLab CI configuration, you can do some neat things with integrating with an IAM provider, and then actually get uh, auto-rotating credentials into your pipelines using Kubernetes. So I'm gonna talk about kind of a use case and going, going from static credentials, credentials yeah. into uh, moving to Kubernetes, you can get a nice uh, time-bound, auto-rotated uh, to reduce your risk profile. How are you finding the monitoring and the observability capabilities now? Are those rising in importance for you as you as you go to more continuous delivery environments where you're where you're running lots of you know where you're, where you're building out on in GitLab and using these runners? Oh, absolutely. I mean, you you don't know what you don't know until you start getting this information. Once you finally get it in front of you. You can find, you know, where where are my choke points? You know, what's going on, and you can start taking proactive steps to make sure that, you know, it doesn't become an issue. Or if there is maybe something going on, you can it reduces your mean time to resolution, which obviously provides a lot of value. Yeah, it certainly does. So when you're looking forward with with uh, with GitLab, and we're just going to be coming to the end of our of our recording here, what are some of the things that you're looking to do? What are some of the next steps with with, with GitLab at DigitalOcean, for example? Yeah, so GitLab is in our marketplace. Uh, we've had a one-click image to spin up a <clears> GitLab <throat> instance for a while. I'm uh, pretty sure we're adding them to our Kubernetes marketplace, too, so you'll be able to deploy GitLab into your Kubernetes cluster really easily. Um, I mentioned before that our CICD team is about to do a bunch of discovery work. Um, so inside DO, we have we have three different CICD platforms we've been using. They finally like standardized on one. And um, now we're trying to figure out what to do with the container registry. Um, I think I think what we really need is like an all-in-one solution like GitLab, honestly. And I'm not just saying that. Like it seems like the team's been, you know, using all these different pieces, building all these different parts out, and like they're trying to figure out how to clobber a bunch of tech together. Uh, and you know, in this case, I think using a out-of-the-box solution sounds like a great idea. Like, like an open source project? Yeah. Like Harbor, have you looked at Harbor? We, so <clears> the <throat> team is definitely looking at Harbor. Um, they're comparing a few other options out there too. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm really not sure what they're gonna choose, so we'll see. And how about from your all perspectives? Like, you guys are using Kubernetes, you're, you know, you're using Git, uh, GitLab. You know, what are some of the next 
things in your mind? What well, are you, the what topic are you of uh, security, you know, I mentioned the, the Kubernetes integration we're talking about, uh, but actually what could really even eclipse that is the upcoming Vault integration. So we're super excited to see HashiCorp and GitLab pair up and offer, you know, that rotated credentials, you know, brokered federated authentication type thing and, and integrating that at the enterprise scale, things like Active Directory or single sign-on. Uh, that's going to be a, a real game changer for making sure your pipelines can access other resources securely. Well, great. Well, we've covered some uh, some good territory here. We got the hot takes. Yeah, uh, I like the hot takes. Uh, we uh, we talked to you just about kind of the the team compositions and who are on your teams and the importance of uh, how you scale out CI/CD and inside big organizations such as Northwest Mutual, and discussed kind of the, you know the next steps for GitLab and CI/CD. And we keep hearing about HashiCorp and. Uh, GitLab coming up, so uh, again, the reinforcement there. So thank you very much for all your time. Thank you. Thanks, Alec. GitLab is a single application for the entire software development lifecycle. From project planning and source code management to CICD monitoring and security, GitLab helps enterprises deliver software to market at new speeds. Listen to more episodes of the New Stack Makers at thenewstack.io slash podcasts. Please rate and review us on iTunes, like us on YouTube, and follow us on SoundCloud. Thanks for listening, and see you next time.